Uh, feels very far away. So, um, I just decided I wanted to make a video and just talk about depression and anxiety. Um, just some background. Um, I know I made a video previously about my panic attacks that happened as a second year. I've had issues with depression, anxiety, the whole shebang, um, runs in my family. Followed me into my freshman year of undergrad, had just the most amazing Jesus moment ever that one could ever ask for. Um, the summer of my freshman year, I just remember falling to my knees, begging God to take it away and to let me be done once and for all for this decade plus depression. And was completely like never had any thoughts of suicide, never had any bouts of feeling so low I couldn't get out of bed anymore. Um, just was completely taken away. And then two years later, um, had another come to Jesus moment and was just had the best year of my life, honestly. I was just filled with so much joy, so much peace I've never felt ever and <sighs> medical school. So here we are, um, just, yeah, kind of the depression was brewing again when I started school and a little before that. And second year, I explained in my other videos, I was just so I'd been so consumed with school every single day, pounding my books, trying to beat information into my brain every hour from the minute I waked up to the minute I went to sleep. That's all I did was school and it was absolutely exhausting. And so second year when I made that change, as I've said in other videos, where I just started to let go, give everything to God and have an actual life and a good life and a balanced life that my panic attacks happened and just it was as if my body didn't know how to not have worry and stress that I just did an elastic band and just I I couldn't go into social situations without tremors. Um, I remember when I got my panic attack, I decided to finally sign up for a Bible study because I was just so terrified of that feeling and having another. And typically panic attacks don't last past 24 hours, but um, I'd say mine was a full 24 hours and then the effects of how it destroyed my body and psychology lasted for at least six days. And it was, I had pretty bad depression in high school, but those six days were absolutely miserable beyond a shadow of a doubt. I was so miserable. And then I feel like the effects of that six day period I felt for months afterwards because I signed up for that Bible study, like I said, and even in a room full of Christians and community, I still could not stop shaking. Like my hands literally would not, I couldn't get them to stop and it was all, it was embarrassing. So I would just like hold my hands together and I would just go like this and just tremors it, and they would come out of nowhere and then slowly this 
2020, um, surprisingly, like when COVID hit is when everything fell back into place and I, I got peace, I was able to do boards with a peace of mind again and yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at right now, just very unstable, um, feel just fortunate and grateful for my life and yeah so depression and anxiety is absolutely bizarre you can all you can almost feel as if that 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 time where you felt so low never existed and I'm starting to even feel it now as the more time goes on I'm starting to feel like that period in my life was just a, f a fog like I'm I'm not sure if it is real or or what isn't anymore um and then you go through moments where you abs you feel like you're going to die. And so it's so bizarre to go from feeling like you're gonna die over and over and over, like you're gonna die a million times to forgetting what it actually felt like. I don't know if you can relate. I know it is a spectrum and some people don't even have good days, so that is just where my experience, um, feel free to, if you would like to share what yours is, it bites you at every corner. I mean, there's really no way that you can prepare for it. I will say the more that you try and tell yourself you, you're not, you're over it and you're not going to have it anymore is not, is not good either. I, I, I've learned that my weaknesses and my downfalls in my life are best held in front of me and not put behind me in a healthy manner, obviously. It's, it's best for me when I acknowledge that I do have a propensity to be depressed and anxious and I need to, instead of pretend it doesn't exist or pretend that I'm over it, I need to keep my life overall as best as possible in a healthy environment and lifestyle. And I'll explain what I do exactly to try and get there. Actually, one of the ways that I have gotten healthier with my habits is acknowledging the fact that I am weak and I am broken. Um, it was actually the thing that got me out of that six day stupor after my panic attack. I remember I'd watched Mercy Me, the movie about the Mercy Me, the Christian uh, band and seeing his struggles and seeing his brokenness, I just like, again, just fell to my knees and just cried, cried in tears of relief that I can live with being broken. And I think a lot of my anxiety, and I'm sure a lot of people is not allowing yourself to feel like you're broken and not accepting it. And so perfectionism, for example, control, for example, you're holding on to something so tightly. You're trying to be somebody so intently that drives you absolutely insane. You're trying to reach a threshold that humanly just is impossible. And even if it is, it requires you to chip off very important pieces in your life that you need to keep a hold of, like having a good diet and having a balance and having good relationships. So yeah, I think, I think acknowledgement of the fact that I am inept by myself has given me the most peace and I believe that's where God wants me but it's also the place where I am most reluctant to go um 
Yeah, and that's a daily thing. That is a daily prayer that I have to implement in my life to constantly be aware of. Um, and that goes along with my other thing that I do. Um, daily praying, daily reading the Bible. Um, praying throughout the day is where I find that I am, I get the most peace. I have my seasons where I only pray in the morning and I feel like once I pray in the morning, I've reached my checklist, but it's actually when I pray throughout the day, even if they're small, even if they're one word, even if it's a sentence, where I'm constantly acknowledging I need help or constantly acknowledging I want to talk to God that I do the best. And that requires honestly praying that God makes me dependent on him and God makes me aware of my weaknesses. So there we go. People try and give you a checklist to approach depression, but it's, it's backwards. And what I mean by that is they tell you, um, go force yourself to get out. Go force yourself to go see a friend, go force yourself to go have a good time. Just get out. Don't sit in your house alone. And not that that isn't true. The If I stayed in my apartment by myself when I had my panic attack, that would not have been good. But it isn't what got me out of it. You know, I, I just think the first thing that needs to happen is your dependence on God and acknowledging that he, you can't do it without him. And so I'm going to say those two things. I'm going to say submission, number one, and then daily, honest, open prayer and reading your Bible. And then from there, there, it opens up everything else. It opens up, go pursue those relationships. Um, go pursue that hike, go pursue that hobby. All important things, but God and submission put purpose behind those things. Or else it's just a relationship. It's just a conversation with a friend where in a lot of cases, it's it's not a relationship because you're going to that person dumping all of your needs on them, dumping all of your burdens and cares. And not that that's not what you should do. It's what relationships should be. But how are you going to carry their burdens if they need you as well? Um, how are you going to see the beautiful creation in that hike without acknowledging the creator? How do you acknowledge the creator of those trees in the sky, but not acknowledge him as the carrier of your burdens. How do you pursue those hobbies um, with the intent to glorify your savior who gave you skills to even have those hobbies if you don't submit and have a relationship with him? And this is purely speaking out of experience, I would not be saying this if I didn't make those same mistakes. Um, and it may not be something that you want to hear, but it's, it's not something that I can hold back from. What kind of person would I be if I found peace in these ways and I didn't share it honestly with you? And Yeah, I, I hope it was, I hope this was helpful. I do, I really hope it was because I know how miserable it really can be. But I also know the light that can come out of it. So, hope that was helpful.